Hi there, I'm Andy Sterkowitz. I'm a self-taught programmer. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about five learning strategies that are very helpful for self-taught programmers. These are different learning strategies that I've come across over the years since I've become a software developer, but also things that I use when I originally started out on my own path in becoming a self-taught software developer. So the reason I think these are so important for people who are just starting out, or even if you maybe landed your first job as a software developer, is that I see a lot of people out there who are working really hard. They are spending a lot of their time, they're sacrificing a lot of their time, their mental energy on learning, right? So they're buying tutorials or maybe they're building applications, watching videos. They're putting so much time and effort into things, into learning, but they are not doing much more than that. They're just hoping that putting a lot of time in, putting their blood, sweat, and tears into this is going to be enough to get them their first job. And the truth is that hope or hoping is not truly a strategy. You need to be systematic, not only about your overall approach, but even about how you learn. So if you're just gonna sit down for eight hours and try to blow through a textbook or you know, sit down and watch a YouTube video for five hours, no matter how good that tutorial is, no matter how good that book is, unless you have a strategy for learning, a specific strategy, understanding psychology, how to remember things, for example, how to get the most out of your learning, then you're simply not going to be as efficient as your time as someone else who understands those basic principles. So I'm gonna cover those today. And by the way, if you're new to this channel, I'm Andy Sterkwitz, and I help people get their career started in programming. So if you're looking to teach yourself how to code and land your first job doing meaningful work and creative work as a software developer, then consider subscribing below and making sure to also hit that bell icon so you get notifications anytime I put out a new video. So with that being said, let's just dive into the five learning strategies. All right, so the first learning strategy is really knowing the sweet spot for you between active and passive learning. And active and passive learning, you could put like this. Passive learning would be something where you're learning passively, right? So you're reading a book, you're kind of just sitting there laying back reading the book, maybe you're watching a tutorial where you're not really actively participating. Um, some people call this conceptual learning. And you can look at that as the opposite of active learning or hands-on learning, maybe where you're actually applying the knowledge you're, you're learning and using it to build an application. Maybe you're doing some coding problems or some like whiteboarding interview problems, right? So these two are sort of diametrically opposed in terms of how you interact with them. One is like, I'm going to do something versus one is sort of, I'm just gonna lay back. And you have to make sure you find that sweet spot. Because if you are 100% conceptual learning, then you are going to run the risk of not being able to actually problem solve, like actually go to a code editor and start applying the knowledge you've learned. And the opposite is true, is all you're trying to do is just put code in a code editor, but you don't know the basic syntax of a programming language, or you don't know the basic concepts, then there's something that's gonna be lacking and your growth is going to slow down. So you have to understand that sweet spot. Now, the sweet spot really kind of depends on where you're at. I'd say if you're earlier on in your career or if you're early on in your self-taught journey, you're gonna to wanna to focus more on the conceptual, like a two to one ratio I think is okay, meaning for every two hours of conceptual learning, you wanna have one hour of your you know, active learning where you're actually manipulating code in a code editor. Later on, maybe once you're kind of farther along, you have some basic concepts of, pr of programming down, you probably wanna go closer to one to one, meaning one hour of passive learning to one hour of active learning. So you wanna keep it about equal or about, about the same. And look, later on, this could really change drastically. I think once you're into your career and you're really just in the thick of it, I think that ratio skews more towards, it could be you know four hours of active learning versus one hour of passive learning. But again, it really depends on where you're at. As you grow in your career, it could swing way back to the two hours of passive versus one hour active. Maybe you're making a big push to learn a new framework that just came out or whatever. So just keep that in mind. There is a sweet spot, you wanna find it for yourself. The second learning strategy is really important as well, and that is to apply spacing to your learning. So a good example of this, maybe you're gonna go and learn a new concept in programming. Let's say you're learning C-sharp and you wanna learn about dependency injection. So you go on Pluralsight, which is a fantastic site to uh, get extended learning once you're in your career. Uh, say you're learning dependency injection, there's like a five hour course in there. Let's say, say it's a seven hour course, it's a nice round number, right? Seven hour course and you wanna just cram today. So you're gonna spend seven hours learning it, maybe over the course of you know eight or 10 hours, you're gonna take a few breaks, but you're just gonna cram it all into today because you wanna get dependency injection down. Like, Check mark, I got it. Well, instead of cramming it all in one day, what studies have actually shown is it's better to take that seven hour course 
and spread it out over time. So if you take that course and spread it out one hour over each day, you're more likely to retain this information. And part of the reason why we think that this occurs is because when you're cramming it all in one day, it seems like you're making momentum, but the actual truth is that when you have to spread this out over time is that you're gonna be revisiting this each and every day, but even more important than that is you're gonna be forgetting knowledge each and every day, right? So day one, you get this momentum built, you're learning that first hour, maybe they're covering basic principles of dependency injection, and all of a sudden you're taking an eight hour break or 10 hour break to sleep, eat, do whatever you have to do, and then you're coming back to that next day and you're like, oh wait, what were we talking about again? And so you have to sort of re-remember things and that forces your brain to put certain things in longer term memory. At least that's the theory. But I found that to be true as well. So you know, the number one rule here is avoid cramming whenever possible. Sometimes you gotta cram, right? But really try to space things out over time. The third learning strategy that I cannot recommend enough is teaching concepts or re-explaining concepts that you've just learned, right? So if you're knee deep in learning some concept right now and you think you got it down, the best way to really test your knowledge is to write a blog post about it and explain what you just learned in detail or even just writing a journal entry or if maybe you're part of a group of people who are at your level, right? Maybe they're intermediate or below or even something like my Facebook group where there's a lot of people looking to become software developers so you could definitely do it in there. Um, if you're in that sort of group, you could sort of explain what you're learning and explain a concept and say, am I right here? Should I, am I thinking right? Because when you have to formulate an idea, you learn so much more. And I've definitely learned this myself now that I'm mentoring people and coaching people to become software developers and start their career. I've really learned that many of the concepts I thought I knew down really well, they, there were some gray areas or there were some areas that I didn't really know or grasp because when people ask me, oh, why did you choose that decision or why did you make that decision? I had to really think deeply about it. So re-explain to others and you could do that through a blog post or journaling or even helping others in a social community of some sort. The fourth learning strategy comes directly from my experience of learning programming and that is to keep track of all the things that you have questions about. And what, I've, what I usually say is keep track of all your whys. So this is something I found happening a lot when I was watching tutorials or reading books. And you know when you're watching a tutorial and you're just making good momentum or you're reading through a book and you're making good momentum, you don't really wanna stop when you have questions. You don't wanna go off on a, you know, a rabbit chase on Google because you're making progress with the book. And that happens all the time, right? You can have some base underlying questions you don't know about. Well, the best thing you can do is to have a either legal pad that you keep next to your desk or maybe a text editor or a Google document with all the questions that you wanna ask that are really bothering you, that you can't answer right now. Maybe you can push it off for later. So if you're learning about JavaScript and you're like, what is this, this keyword that I keep seeing all over the place? I really don't understand this. Well, if the instructor of the course you're watching or the book you're reading isn't explaining it, write it down say, what is this in JavaScript? And then later on at some future point, after you've had some time away, maybe you can revisit the concept. You can go off on a rabbit chase for a half hour or an hour, whatever you feel uh, is comfortable for you. The problem I see with a lot of people who don't track what they don't, what they are forgetting or they aren't keeping track of what they don't know is that when they get done with the tutorial or when they get done with the book, they just have all of these things in their head that they remembered they didn't know and so they feel very frustrated. But if they can just clarify, okay, there's like five things that I really wanted to learn and then they spend the time after their book is done or after the tutorial is done, then they're gonna feel a lot more confident moving forward that at least they have some, some understanding about what's going on. So keep track of what you don't know. Be pretty diligent about this. I like a legal pad next to my desk, but you can easily use like a Google, Google Docs or maybe a Evernote document as well. And the fifth learning strategy is really a foundational principle for all effective learning. And that is knowing how to rest and recover. And I see a lot of people out there who are going the hustle and grind route. And I totally respect that. And they're talking about how they're working 12 hours or studying for 12 hours. Maybe they're working a full-time job. They're sleeping four or five hours a night. They're putting their heart and soul into this, their blood, sweat, and tears. And like I said, I totally appreciate that more than anyone else, but you also have to understand that resting and recovering, meaning taking time off to sleep, taking just time off to think about some other things like hang out with friends and do normal things is so important for you to retain as much information as possible and just it's generally good for you in a long-term perspective because if you're gonna be studying for a long period of time, which this takes more than just a few weeks, you wanna make sure that you are looking at it this long-term. I think studies are pretty clear about the effects of lack of sleep on our cognitive and executive functions 
meaning that when you start getting or racking up sleep deprivation, that your IQ drops. This also happens with stress, by the way. So if you're you know, missing out on sleep, if you're not taking breaks, your stress levels are gonna go up, you're gonna lose a lot of sleep, and your IQ literally drops by about, I think, 10 to 15 points. And also, too, they've found that people who get into deeper levels of sleep deprivation, also the, they'll see the same effects as, uh, I think, a 0.1 BAC, or you know, basically being drunk. So you imagine if you're, you're putting in all this work, you're sacrificing time away from friends and family, and you really wanna get this done, but you're putting yourself under, you know, you're not sleeping a lot, you're not really taking breaks. Well, you're literally working on a lower IQ level. You're working like you're being drunk, and that's not effective for doing what you wanna be doing. So make sure to apply the principles of rest. Assume that like you're an Olympic athlete and you need your rest. You can't just be working out all day. And the same thing comes to studying. When you study, study hard, but when you take breaks, be just as disciplined about not doing the work and stepping away and making sure you're getting sleep. So rest and recovery are huge. Don't forget about that. So that's really it. Those are my five learning strategies that I've used as a self-taught programmer. I hope they are really helpful. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Other than that, by the way, if you are still at that beginning point where you're trying to figure things out in terms of what programming languages to learn, what path you wanna take, if you are still in that same position, I've created a PDF report of the five best programming languages to learn in 2019, it's a pretty comprehensive report. It's really gonna help give you a lot of clarity about some of the different options out there. I'll give you my opinion on what I think is the best to learn, especially if you're at a newer stage and trying to figure out what to learn. So I highly recommend checking that out. If you wanna download that report, go to andysterkwoods.com forward slash report. Other than that, that's really all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching and peace out. See you later. <laughs>